สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to a very special episode of Hot Thai Kitchen. So I just came back from a trip to Thailand, but this was not a regular trip. I was on a special mission. So the Thai Trade Center invited me along with a couple of journalists on this fantastic trip that looks at the journey of rice from patty to table. I was super excited about this trip before I went, but by the time I was done with it, I was just absolutely blown away at all the different things that I learned. It was such a cool experience, and I'm so excited to be. Able to share this with you in this special video. So to start out the trip, we went to a province of Supanburi, which is not too far out of Bangkok, and we went to this place that was so fascinating, and we got to see the very beginning of the journey of rice. Let's take a look. So I'm here at a place called n a h i a Chai in the Supanburi province. Now. This place, I don't really know too much about it, but I know that it's a learning center about rice. So I'm here to learn about how rice is grown, and apparently it's supposed to be pretty hands-on. But I really have no idea what to expect, so this is going to be fun. At first, I wasn't quite sure what this place was exactly. There were some traditional Thai buildings, but also some sort of a factory or maybe a warehouse, and of course, lots and lots of rice. Loads of rice. Now, what I did know and was excited about was that I would get to do some hands-on rice planting. But first, we got on a brief introductory tour led by h i a Chai himself, who is the owner of this place. It doesn't look like much here, but what's behind me are trays that the little seedlings are dropped into. And check this out: this is a tiny little rice grain that's just sprouted. This is like the babyest of baby rice. Next comes the best part. We're heading to a miniature rice paddy, and yes, this is where I would get to do some actual rice planting for the first and probably the only time in my life. Look at this rice on the plant. I've never seen one. I've never touched one until today. I've seen pictures of it on rice bags. But look at that! Look how beautiful this is. All right, my uniform has arrived. I gotta put my farmer hat on and my big boots. My farmer boots. Ah! Wow, these fit better. แล้วไงคะผูกตรงนี้หรอมันไงมาที่ไหน It's been a long time since somebody tied my laces for me. Ta-da! I'm ready to. I am so excited! You have no idea. I've always seen this, like I don't know, on TV and documentaries, and now I am about to experience it firsthand. Oh, uh, okay. huh? okay. you buy t h a o o h so apparently they do it bare feet. I'm just a princess. So these are the rice seedlings that have been grown separately, and now that they've grown to the right age, they get pla planted into this muddy paddy here. <laughs> Why? Look, my g l o r i a So that mud was a lot deeper than I thought, and really hard to walk in in those boots. No wonder farmers actually go bare feet. The planting itself was pretty straightforward. Stick each rice plant into the mud in nice, neat rows, and then smooth everything out to cover the hole. This is this is a very strange feeling on my hands right now. It's soft and smooth. If any of you have ever put like mud mask on your face, that's that's kind of like this. I am never throwing away a single grain of rice ever again. Ta-da! <laughs> I grew rice, ladies and gentlemen. I really need a round of applause for all this. Oh my gosh, was that an experience? That was so much fun, and it's a lot of work. But people used to do this for a living all day, day in, day out. I mean, nowadays they have trucks and things that do this for you in neat rows. Man, that's a mess. But. Back in the day, this is what people did: eight hours a day just to grow rice. This is how you really appreciate your food. After that, we headed to this beautiful carpet-like vast field of baby rice plants, and turns out this is actually Hia Chai's main business. Oh, 
Look at this. It's literally a carpet of rice. So this is the seedling and now they have a machine like a big tractor that separates all of these into tiny little bunches and then they place those little bunches in the patties. So basically what I was doing with my hands, now they have a machine to do all of that. Look, the watering, the watering machines here. So what they do here is they actually grow the seedlings for various farmers. So they will sell kai, and you kai hei chao na ba ha, ba? So they'll sell these seedlings for all the farmers in this form, and they just roll it up like carpet and transport it. But the highlight for me were these adorable buffaloes. Hie Chai actually keeps them here to represent pre-tractor times when buffaloes were used to plow rice paddies. This is a female. Her name is Wan. So all this was good and fun, but it still left me a little confused as to what this place actually is. It's a learning center, it's a bit of a museum, it's also a rice nursery. So I chatted with Hia Chai to find out what is the story behind this place. So he explained to me that back in the day, he just sold seedlings. He developed different rice varieties and he sold them to farmers. But as he became more and more successful, he started to realize that there was a lot of knowledge that he collected. A lot of farming techniques, just know-hows in general about rice farming, but there was nowhere to spread that knowledge and to pass it on to other farmers. So he wanted to start a learning center to serve that need. Today, Hia Chai opens it up to the public and also accepts field trips because he recognizes that knowledge about rice is so core to the Thai way of life since rice really is the lifeblood of Thai people. Now in Thailand, we have a saying that rice farmers are the backbone of our country and it is absolutely true. I mean, especially before the age of machinery, I mean, that's how hard they had to work all day to get rice on our table and we eat a lot of rice. I mean, it is our number one sustenance, so definitely have a newfound appreciation for their hard work. So from the farm, the rice gets dried and then milled. So that part we didn't get to see because apparently it only happens during certain times of year. But we got to see what I think is a really interesting part of this whole process. So our next stop is a rice processing plant. See, I always thought that rice just gets milled, bagged, and off it goes to the store, but apparently not because I am standing here at a processing plant where they deal with the rice between the milling and the bagging process. I have no idea what happens here, so let's go find out together. This plant is called Siam Grains and it's located in the suburb of Bangkok. We were first introduced to the manager and our guide, Mr. Gittipan. We started with an introductory video, and then Mr. Kittipan pointed out that just outside our window are the trucks full of rice that have just arrived from the mill. And the first thing they do is they poke each bag of rice with this massive needle that sucks up a sample of rice into the plant for quality control. This right here is the first step of quality control, so the rice just got vacuumed that's where they all ended up. So they're looking for, first of all, moisture content. If the moisture content is above 14%, they reject it and they send it back because if it's too moist, it'll actually get mold on it. And the second thing is they sort of just, as you can see, rice all over the table. They sort of scatter the rice on the table and just take a look at its overall appearance. Does it look good? You know, does it look like nice, healthy rice? And the third thing is they look for yellow grains. So there are usually a few yellow grains, which he said is usually rice that's too old or whatever. I'm not entirely sure, but it's rice that they do not want. And if they look and they see that this lot has far too many yellow grains, they reject the whole lot. There's a lot of different tiny little details that go into this quality control process. After the rice gets through that preliminary sorting process, half of it goes up to the lab for you know, things that requires lab or further QC. And the other half is really interesting, gets cooked in these cute little rice cookers behind me. I love it. And they cook every single batch of rice to make sure that it's up to standard. 
this is the lab I was talking about. Here, the rice goes through a much more rigorous testing of moisture content, of the whiteness of the rice, and also of purity, which basically looks at how much of this jasmine rice is actually not jasmine rice. Turns out that some contamination of other white rice is inevitable, but if it's not at least 92% jasmine, they reject the lot. So we're going to now go in and take a closer look at the processing, but I'm looking at this pile of rice here and I recognize that I can get that at my local supermarket. The place is massive, and the first thing that hits you as you walk in is the smell of rice. Yep, there's definitely a lot of rice in here. The rice first goes through a machine that sifts out the little stones that's left over from the milling process because apparently some rice mills use stones to mill the rice. And then the rice gets polished for that nice shiny appearance that you see at the store. But the really impressive thing was the next station that he showed me. So this is the coolest part of this whole process. It's a color sorter. Basically, there's a camera that's looking at all the rice that's pouring through. And if it catches anything that doesn't look like rice, basically any yellowing grains, pieces of plastic or glass or anything that could have contaminated it, it uses wind to blow it all out. So that at the end, the only thing that comes through is rice. How cool is that? Look at this. This is all the rice that went through the color sorter. So you can see it's all the yellow and white and all the imperfect grains came out. And after all the sifting and the polishing and the sorting, the rice is finally ready to be bagged. But it's not quite done yet. The bags then go through a metal detector to see if there's any teeny tiny bits of metal that might have slipped through the cracks. Then, and only then, are the bags ready to be shipped out. And this giant claw right here basically puts the rice on the pallet and then off it goes into the trucks, into the containers. And look at that. How cool is that? And it just senses the presence of the rice and off it goes. Who knew so much had to happen to rice even after it's been milled before it could end up on our store shelves, right? Now, when I was at Sayam Grains, I thought the place was huge and I had never seen so much rice in my life. But that was about to change because our next stop was in the province of Ayutthaya at the CP processing plant. I am now standing in front of the biggest rice processing plant in the world. This place processes over a million tons of rice a year. A million! And this place is so big, it's even got its own port. And from here, rice gets shipped either domestically or it goes to another port where it will ship all over the world. So the rice you're having could be coming from right here. And just so you get an idea of how large this operation is, they have a command center. I know, a command center for rice. And from this room, they can keep track of every single step of the process, not just at this plant, but also at their other plants around the country. You know, what fascinated me about this place isn't so much what they do, because fundamentally, they do the same thing as Siam Grains does. But what's remarkable about it is the scale. When I say that this place processes a million tons of rice a year, to put that into perspective, that is 15 billion cups of cooked rice. 15 billion meals come out of this place every single year. Now, that was a lot of rice. And I had no idea rice could be such a technologically advanced operation. I mean, when I was in that command center, I felt like I was at NASA or something. And you know, when all was said and done, when we concluded the trip, the thing that was going through my mind at the time was that I have cooked thousands of batches of rice in my life, easy. And it had never occurred to me that the reason why there's no, not even a tiny little rock, a tiny bit of hay, no dirt, no nothing, and the reason why it's so white and fluffy every single time 
Like that doesn't happen naturally or easily for that matter. I mean, it takes a lot of work and attention to detail from people like Hia Chai who develops a good variety and then from people at the processing plant who clearly take no shortcut to make sure the rice is absolutely perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this trip and learned from it as much as I did. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so so you never miss an episode. And I will see you next time. สวัสดีค่ะ